Hello, my name is Octomus and welcome to my video guide on my new space shuttle. We're standing on the Mock MLP, or Mobile Launcher Platform, and a fully fleshed out one, full fidelity replica will be coming out shortly, along with associated crawler to transport it around the planet. Uh, we are running this demo in survival mode, you can see it by power ticking down. If you paste this in, the shuttle comes fully preloaded with fuel and everything you need for a full successful orbital mission. This uh, little support here is just temporary until the MLP and the proper attachment gets implemented. So without further ado, let's get tracking. We'll enter through here. Dampers are obviously gonna help. Can be a bit tricky, but... The shuttle is remote controlled, we have no cockpits in here, so we'll find the remote, take control, and the craft is ours. I'll immediately go to the second tab, hit 7 to close the payload bay doors, and verify everything looks intact, which it does. We have tasted this in nicely. bay door closed, we don't need this uh, tab anymore, so we'll switch to number one. Turn off dampener so we don't burn on the uh, platform now. Turn on the main engines and start increasing our thrust until we have liftoff. There we go, liftoff of the space shuttle Discovery. On its mission to bring Hubble to its place. I'm making this guide because I got some feedback on the TLDR nature of my descriptions, which I admit is pretty long for how simple this actually is. And also it gives me an opportunity to speak and ramble on more about the shuttle and the replica here. I'll be doing a mock mission, not a realistic one, so don't expect roll or pitch maneuvers here. I'm just going straight up and straight down and managing our fuel in doing so. And we do the fuel management by observing our speed. We'll want to maintain it at maximum with as little thrust as possible. So every time we cap out on speed, we reduce thrust. We can do this by pressing 3. We can see speed is starting to drop now. So we'll just keep it here. If it starts dropping too much, like I don't like this, I just want to get up as fast as I can. So I'll just give it a little bit more oomph. That should get us nice. Yeah. There's my previous Hubble, I had to redo this uh, tutorial. But if all things go well, we'll have a second space telescope. You'll notice in this cockpit here I have these status panels. SRB stands for uh, Solid Rocket Boosters. And ET is our external fuel tank. And once we detach those, we'll have these lights turn off. On the right side we have controls related to uh, Descent and payload management. We have a little uh, checklist on the roof here. SRB separation at 0.5 G and it's on button 8. And external fuel tank separation at 0.1 G's, button 9. I've set these controls to be as simple and as intuitive as possible. There's a few timers going on in this ship the separation events happen, so we don't need to do anything but just press a button and watch it go. I should manage my fuel a bit better. Make sure we can drop off a lot of thrust. Nice. Right on. We're approaching. Let's separate our SRBs. Number 8. Let's see the light go off. And there they go, in all their splendor. They SRBs have inbuilt gyros that tilt them outwards and some boosters to help them get away from the shuttle so they don't clip the wings. Should separate nice and clean. Additionally, the, uh, here. Uh, the SRBs have parachutes so they are fully reusable. Like the real things. Just a little bit of refurbishment needed. Should be able to boost the slide. 
Those SRBs indeed provide a lot of thrust. It's alright. The uh, main tank here also has internal thrust arrays, but you can't really see them. I've had them mimic the fuel by uh, letting the shuttle use less of its own boosters and more internal on the front, uh, external tank. And this makes it so we can burn the shuttle engines for much longer, basically mimicking the fuel feeding into those RS-25s that we have the engine. Way again. Start box called the space just got real. I think this is version 1.4 or uh, 4. I'll have it linked on the description once this file goes live. Plenty of way to go. But it's space and our view is fantastic like I said. We are high above the Earth like planets. We can definitely see the curve it's not a space pancake. Take that, flat engineers. We are at 0 0.17, approaching our external tank detachment. As you can see, we don't need much of thrust anymore. We are just happily scooting up. separation. It's gliding off nice. You'll notice our speed is dropping and that is because we have no more thrust. Our main thrusters are out of fuel. We'll turn on our orbital maneuvering system and RCS by pressing number four. And we'll scoot off into space. Directly towards the sun. Now that we are in close to zero-g, we can switch to second tab and open up our halo bay doors. The real space shuttles had climate control equipment on, mounted on the insides of those doors, basically like the giant radiators you can see on the ISS. And this kept the spacecraft cool enough from all the heat generated. Additionally, we can start to see our Hubble. It's a bit dark, so let's turn on the halo bay lights by pressing it. We are at 0.7 Gs, and at this point I like to start boosting up to 0.6, so we're at full speed. There we go. And because our dampeners are off, we can perform a maneuver where we point our tail towards our velocity vector and our nose towards our retrograde. So now we're traveling as first, so to say. And as soon as we hit 0, 0.0 Gs, we should see the ADI, or Attitude Display uh, Indicator, or WIPS Artificial Horizon, as the script is showing here, turn into XYZ type of indicator, because we will no longer have horizon in space. Just letting it glide, or saving fuel. We have 46% remaining, that's very good. Plenty of room. Lots of room to maneuver, we did good saving fuel. 
the reason the shuttle is filled with so much extra fuel is because if you want to simulate the real launch and have that pitch and roll maneuvers, I'll turn on the dampeners to break. Uh, you should do that. It's equipped to have enough to travel in something like 30-ish degrees off zenith. Or more even if you push the limits. But anyway, we're here. Enough talking, let's get to deploying our payload. And here we run into the first bug, and the only bug in the shuttle, where it doesn't move. The gyros don't work. All that is needed is to give slight nudge with the engines, and then it obeys again. Now we're pointing directly into the sun. Nice. Let's uh, turn off dampeners and detach our payload, the Hubble Space Telescope. downwards motion and it floats right off the bay nice and serene but you'll notice it isn't fully finished it's not quite the Hubble you know we'll come to a stop here and get off our seat go down and pick up all this that is needed not the ice not the uranium but these components float off here close to the Hubble and on the aft of the Hubble there's this projector toggle and you should just run your well 